Hello and welcome to Sats Comprehensive, my name is Ken Gowdy and this is the third video in this series giving your saxophone a deep clean. In the last video we disassembled the saxophone so in this video we will clean everything. Since the way we clean one key is the same as cleaning another I will go through the general principles which would then need to be applied to all of the keys. So starting with the pivot screws and hinge rods. I place my pivot screws and hinge rods in an organiser made from a peel organiser. I then sprayed them with a degreaser and weighted according to the instructions in the bottle. Then one by one I worked to the grease of the pivot screws and hinge rods, especially from the threaded part and the slots where the screwdriver goes. Then I rinsed them off in water, dry them and put them in my other organiser ready for when I reassemble the saxophone. Now moving on to the keys. The keys are either held on the saxophone by pivot screws or hinge rods. Clean out the bowel of the keys held with hinge rods using a pipe cleaner wet with naphtha or lighter fluid. If you pull the pipe cleaner completely through the barrel then there may be some hairs of the pipe cleaner left in the barrel so we need to remove them either with our fingernails, a small brush or blow them out. We cut off the dirty ends of the pipe cleaner so that we can start again cleaning without wasting the pipe cleaner. We may need to clean apart several times until we are satisfied that it is clean. Then clean the ends of the barrels. If the keys are held by pivot screws then use a small pointed q-tip or cotton bud as the pipe cleaner may not do a good job in cleaning such a small hole. My saxophone is a Selma saxophone and we have spring loaded pivot receivers. These protrude out a little so you can grab them with your fingernails and pull them out. The only thing holding them in is grease so they are easy to remove. Only one of these was stuck in my saxophone but if you have a very thin hook you can pass them through the hole in the receiver to remove them. Then you can use a pipe cleaner with naphtha to clean up the hole in the key and spray the spring loaded receivers with degreaser. I place all of my spring loaded receivers in my organiser to keep track of them so that I can return them back to their original keys. The upper parts of the keys are either wiped down with a damp paper towel or cloth or with q-tips dipped in naphtha. The pads can be wiped down with a cloth or paper towels wet with water or naphtha or using q-tips dipped in naphtha. I did read somewhere that using alcohol to clean a pad may cause the pad to dry out so using naphtha on a pad may have that same effect. If the pad is not that dirty then it's probably best to use a damp cloth or a damp paper towel but if it is very dirty then you can use a q-tip dipped in naphtha. Now we move on to the main body of the saxophone. Use the pipe cleaners with naphtha to clean up the holes in the pulse. It might not fit in all of the poles, especially in the threaded holes of the small hinge rods, so be careful not to force it. Again, make sure that the hairs of the pipe cleaner are not left in the holes. Then clean the saxophone with cold water and a little detergent. I washed my saxophone in the bath and placed a bath mat at the bottom so that it would not scratch the saxophone or the bath. Now some may be worried about putting water on their saxophone but this is what happens when you give your saxophone over to a technician to clean. 
Some technicians will place the saxophone in an ultrasonic cleaning chamber and allow the water vibrating at an ultrasonic frequency to clean the saxophone for several minutes. This would obviously clean the saxophone better than cleaning it by hand, but not everybody has an ultrasonic cleaner. Before cleaning my saxophone, I took off all of the key guards as not to get the felts wet. Two of the key guards looked the same, but had different lengths of felts on them. So I had to remember which guard went where because one of the guards regulated how high one of the keys would open. There may be some felts or cords stuck on the body of the saxophone. You will need to know where these are located in case they come off when you start washing the saxophone so you know where to put them back. Then with a small brush that passes under the springs, we can clean the saxophone. We do not want to hit the springs with the brush. Bigger soft brushes can be used for cleaning inside the saxophone by placing them in the top or in the bell or carefully through the tone holes. The tone holes can then be washed. Once cleaned, the saxophone will need to be dried with a paper towel, being careful of the springs. The tone holes can be further cleaned with the Q-tips and naffa, especially inside the tone holes. On my saxophone, there was still some stubborn grime on the inside of the tone holes. Make sure that the saxophone is fully dried and it can be left to further air dry. If you put a little oil on a Q-tip, then you can wipe the springs to give them a coating of oil. The springs may be rusty in places, but I would not try to remove the rust. I did see a video where it was suggested that the spring hook could be used to scrape the springs, but personally, I did not think it was worth trying this. In the next video, we will go through the oiling and greasing process and some of the difficulties I faced putting the saxophone back together.